So the con folks over at Comica decided to send out their Venmo queue. That's what you're hearing right now with uh, some light EQs or wherever done to it. I'll try to put on screen what I've done. But this is coming in at, I believe, $250. This is a little bit more on the expensive end, in my personal opinion, as far as these type of systems go. But you'll see why, because this is a four channel mini wireless microphone system. And if you guys have been on the channel recently, you know, I covered a similar system from Seven Rhymes with their four channel system. But I recommended this one only being used for outside vlogging and stuff. And if you're not taking content creation too seriously, you want all the ambient noise of cars passing by, uh, birds chirping, you know, dogs barking, you're on nature walks, whatever it may be. And you want that into your audio because that's the type of cozy comfort kind of channel you're running or maybe you're just you know making memories of your family's vacation maybe you're traveling or something like that and you don't care about having all that stuff because you're not going to really do a lot of eqing in post or maybe not editing too much wherever of the audio then you know this is fine or wherever it's coming in you know below 200 dollars or wherever and again you can check out for the full review link in the description but for those who wanted a little bit more professional sounding audio and a little bit more options there is the one from comica that i mentioned in that video and we're taking a look at it today again you've been hearing it going into my sony zve 10 with the transmitter set to uh six on the volume level and the actual volume adjustment however on the camera is around five if i remember correctly off the top of my head so sorry for the weird cut future squid here i forgot to turn off the noise gate for my microphone so the rest of the recording or wherever sounds really really weird so i'm gonna go ahead and redo this and uh i'm gonna tell you guys that the comica Vimo q is a really good lavalier system and we're going to talk about what comes inside the actual carrying case you get four of these furry wind muffs there is a injection kind of thing or wherever to plug into the top of the port for the actual microphone or wherever so it sits right in there and once you put it on or wherever the wind muffs don't feel like they're going to move around or anything or fall off by accident so that's really nice and you still have a way to you know move the latch on the back of the the actual transmitter because there's a cutout here which some companies when i've tested their uh their actual wind muffs or wherever and put them on it does make the latch a little bit harder to open and clip this one you do not have that issue there on the actual uh, transmitter itself you have the mute button and you have the power button you have a artificial denoiser plus and the plus button wherever for volume you have the negative uh or minus for volume as well as a resync button and again, you have the lapel mic jack right there and the actual microphone uh, right there. So again, you can put your own lapel mic in it because it does not come with one if you want to. But I think the audio sounds good enough without it, unless you're doing some client work or something like that to where you can't have the transmitter shown for whatever reason, even though the white one and black one both look good. They might just want a lapel mic and that's it. You still have the option there. You can find fairly decent ones for cheap. I found a four pack of newer ones that I'll leave down in the description. It's about four of them for about 40 bucks wherever on Amazon. So again, you could go with better ones out there from, you know, more reputable brands for audio stuff, wherever that's what you want to do. But I think the audio that you're getting straight out of here, wherever it's good enough without needing the lapel mic, that's just my personal opinion. But for this price point, I can understand some people's frustrations not having, you know, a lapel mic included. Over here, we have the actual receiver. And this receiver is going to be, you know, going dim from when you actually, uh, you know, leave it around for a while. But then when you click one of the buttons, it will, you know, brighten up. And then you can go ahead and do whatever you wanted to do. Just keep that in mind. You're going to have to do that or wherever if you are going to change something on it and it's been on running for a while. Over here, you have the power and the mode button. What the mode button allows you to do is switch from mono to stereo to quad mode. And what quad mode is, is means C and D is gonna be sent out of the headphone jack to wherever device you want. And A and B is gonna be sent out from the normal out, uh, line out jack as well as it also being the line out wherever for your camera. I just have an extension on here so I can show you guys the actual receiver, but you get the TRS to TRS cable that's going into the camera right now in there. And you also get a USB type C to USB type C cable with a USB type A adapter on it. Companies need to start doing what Comica does as far as labeling their cables. This says smartphone and computer. And even if you don't want to read it, you still have symbols or whatever. This is on all their cables. This has been on the Adcaster C2 from them that I received, the, uh, the Comica VM30 that I reviewed when I purchased with my own money has those cables. The Comica uh, Boom XD Pros that they send out for a review 
those have it. It's just really nice to have those kind of things or wherever on your cables uh, for those people who need it because maybe they, you know what I'm saying, they don't read the manual and they don't know what cables go to what. This one is your smartphone cable wherever. And like I said, you have your camera one as well as it being also for video switching to hook up to your video switcher. So again, this is going to be for four people. So you might have, you know, a video switcher with two cameras or three cameras hooked up or wherever, and you can still capture the audio from this into that video switcher. Unfortunately, I do not have one on hand, even though I have multiple cameras and you see me switching and stuff. This should just be recording to OBS so I can record simultaneously my top down as well as my talking head shot at the same time and not have to sync it up in post. And I really wish I would get a video switcher. If a company wants to send one out, that would be awesome. Again, you get, you know, like I said, four of these furry wind muffs, that's it, that's in the case. Um, the only thing with the case that I will say, as far as the white one goes, it does look like it's gonna be able to to rub off like black blemishes and all that stuff or whatever on the actual case itself. It feels sturdy, it feels durable. It's just that, you know, it's a white accessory. So you're gonna want to take care of it and make sure that you don't mark it up. But the skin kind of texture that they put on it is pretty cool. But it also, like I said, leads me to believe that this can get dirty pretty quick. So again, just keep that in mind or whatever with white accessories, you always wanna take care of it. But I wanted it in white because it looks so good. In my personal opinion, you get the battery light indicator on the case where if you press the button down, you can see it. You get the USB type C charging port right there with the cable included to obviously charge that. And then you get the the, um, the resync button or wherever if you hold it down to resync it and to show the battery life and everything. And honestly, overall, this case is, like I said, very durable. The base or wherever is set in there really nice. I don't think you can cram anything else in here if you wanted to add to some, something or wherever else uh, to other than what they've included. So keep that in mind. So with that being said, I do want to go ahead and test the mic without, you know, the VSTs and plugins and stuff like that. So here we go. All right. So no VSTs, no plugins. This is just raw audio from the actual you know, microphone itself going straight into the camera. I have a fan that's been going on for uh, about uh, arms and a half lengths away or wherever pointing directly at me. Uh, this fan back here has been turning off and on or wherever because it's tied to the temperature of the room. And I have a PC going on or wherever. And this is just how it sounds. Again, just normal room audio, I would say for, you know, a content creator or something like that who has a fan going, PC, lights, all that stuff. And this is the way it sounds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the microphone off. I'm gonna put on the denoiser to let you know uh, how that sounds. All right. so. No VSTs, no plugins. This is just raw audio from the actual you know, microphone itself going straight into the camera. I have a fan that's been going on for uh, about uh, arms and a half lengths away or wherever pointing directly at me. Uh, this fan back here has been turning off and on or wherever because it's tied to the temperature of the room. And I have a PC going on or wherever. And this is just how it sounds. Again, just normal room audio, I would say for, you know, a so once you turn on the denoiser for the microphone, the light indicator will turn green from blue and blue just means this is regular audio tone or wherever that's it. Green means that the denoiser is turned on and then red means the mic is muted. So as soon as you take it out the case or wherever, all the lights for the microphones will be blue. Even if you turned on the denoiser and you put it back in, and you take it out. It's kind of like a reset button for them. So keep that in mind if you're going to go ahead and do that in the future. But again, no EQs. This is how it sounds with the denoiser. And honestly, I think it sounds good as far as not messing up my voice and making me sound robotic or anything like that. I've tested outside. I've already did this test, however, multiple times, but I keep messing up the audio video as far as like the EQs that I'm doing myself. And it's not a knock to the microphone. It's just, I'm tired of having to record this over and over. But yeah, this is the way it sounds. I'm gonna put on the, the wind muff so you can hear how it sounds in here with denoising. So once you turn on the denoiser for the microphone, the light indicator will turn green from blue and blue just means this is regular audio tone or wherever that's it. Green means that the denoiser is turned on and then red means the mic is muted. So as soon as you take it out the case or wherever, all the lights for the microphones will be blue. Even if you turned on the denoiser and you put it back in, you take it out. It's kind of like a reset button for them. So keep that in mind if you're gonna go ahead and do that in the future. And all right, this is the way it sounds with the denoiser and the furry wind muff on and wherever. And again, no VSTs, no plugins, no nothing. Still the fans going on and stuff like that. Still the same thing, nothing has changed. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the VSTs. And there you go, that's the way it sounds with the VSTs and plugins going. The fans are still going and everything like that. I just have the denoiser still on. And again, that's the way the audio sounds. So let's go ahead and do the outside test and show you guys what that sounds like. So, all right, I got the Comica VMQ hooked up to the camera and I want to go ahead and tell you guys that the transmitter 
in a bright sunny day there's no clouds in the sky at all I can't see the receiver screen or wherever when it dims when it gets a little bit brighter once you hit one of the buttons before you know it goes into its dim mode or wherever to say battery um, it's a little bit brighter and you can kind of somewhat see it but even being a reasonable like an arm's length and almost a half away from the camera uh, I can't see it you know outside and again there's no cloud cover it's just bare open sky the sun is being straight on me it's supposed to be 80 degrees outside but it feels like it's almost 90 something um, and I am getting a little bit of a cross breeze uh, from this side but there's trees and a house and stuff blocking most of the wind so I don't know if it's gonna pick it up obviously we have the wind muff on or wherever to see how that goes or where with the audio but again this is the way it sounds just outside and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the wind muff off. Okay, so that's a little bit annoying. I literally just took this off and the wind stopped blowing. Um, so <laughs> there's nothing I could really do about that. Uh, it's just nature itself is deciding not to work with me. You don't wanna get any further away from your camera, especially when you are a one person show, but something like this or wherever, when you have four mics or wherever, it's four people potentially um, and potentially a cameraman, you probably could you know, back up from a camera or wherever and get reasonable distance. But when people want to do distance tests, they expect them to go to the max distance and show it and stuff like that. I'm a one person show or wherever the day and age, like I said, with the rhymes and I think with also with the Godox, you can hear the wind starting to pick up a little bit now. Um, you don't want to leave your camera, you know what I'm saying, and go that absurd distance. But when people want to do distance tests, they expect them to go to the max distance and show it and stuff like that. I'm a one person show or wherever the day and age, like I said, with the rhymes and I think with also with the Godox, you can hear the wind starting to pick up a little bit now. Um, you don't want to leave your camera you know what i'm saying and go that absurd distance and my car is still going through some issues or whatever for fixing it and i'm not trying to go into the street or wherever with cars passing by or something like that and just being in the, the neighborhood that i kind of live in i'm not trying to leave my camera gear you know super far away from me to where i can't get to it so we got the denoiser on and this is the way it sounds or wherever again these birds are chirping and fairly good distance away from me and everything no cars are passing by it doesn't seem like anybody's doing work outside like in my other previous outside tests but we're still getting a little bit of wind it's nothing too crazy it's just like a light breeze all right so we got the denoiser on and this is the way it sounds or wherever again these birds are chirping and fairly good distance away from me and everything no cars are passing by it doesn't seem like anybody's doing work outside like in my other previous outside tests but we're still getting a little bit of wind it's nothing too crazy it's just like a light breeze it's blowing all over the place i wish i could get it more directly towards me but it's not all right so we got the denoiser on and this is the way it sounds or wherever again these birds are chirping and fairly good distance away from me and everything no cars are passing by it doesn't seem like anybody's doing work outside like in my other previous outside tests but we're still getting a little bit of wind it's nothing too crazy it's just like a light breeze it's blowing all over the place i wish i could get it more directly towards me but it's not all right so the wind is still blowing i could feel it blowing a little bit towards me so i'm gonna turn this way a little bit and uh let it catch up or wherever with the furry wind muff and the denoise going on and everything and i do want to state that this video is going to be obviously pretty long i know these wireless tests or wherever i've seen people do you know test on these kind of microphones or wherever really quick they don't put any eq on on it they just you know talk into the microphone or whatever and that's it and then they go do a distance test and the video is done in like 10 minutes and i'm like okay so how does it sound with eqs what eqs did you use if you used any um you know how does it sound outside with the wind and the birds chirping and all that stuff and then what does it sound like when you put eqs and like that's why i try to do all this stuff and i know i'm not the best at doing it i try to do it in a manner to where i'm wanting to know the information as far as possibly picking up something like this so again i know i'm not the best at it it's not flashy it's not a whole bunch of b-roll and you know hyping up the product or whatever but like i said i do like this one and i'm trying to get you guys to encourage you to buy something like this over the seven rhymes the seven Seven rhymes even if you don't want to take content creation seriously there is that cheaper option out there and i think it would fit those people in those use case scenarios but having it being versatile like this where you can use it more in a more professional setting as well as doing the other stuff that the seven rhymes does and on top of that you get the increase in audio quality 
in my personal opinion, it justifies paying a little bit more or wherever to get something like this. And that's why I wanted to cover it. I, there's hasn't been a product from Comica that I've been disappointed with as far as the audio quality goes, especially with their microphones. Um, I'm not sure what else they have that I could test or wherever from them. But Comica, if you're watching this video and you want to send me something else, feel free. All right. To wrap up the video, I do want to say thank you so much for Comica for sending out the Venmo Q. I think that this is a little bit expensive being $250 and not including, like I said, the wireless uh, lav mics to go with the wireless microphones. But in my personal opinion, the audio sounds good enough, I think, for the average content creator who is doing something like this, as well as hooking up, you know, two or three, four more guests or, you know, people on their podcast, you know, their um, vlogs or something like that or maybe, like I said, reaction videos or something along those lines, I think it's going to be very, very well suited to those types of content creators. For those who are going to get into like doing stuff for businesses and corporations and stuff, they might not like the branding on the side. They might not like the having this look or something like that. So an additional cost, you will have to get that wireless, uh, you know, lavalier or lapel mic or whatever to go with the, the microphones. But in my personal opinion, if you're getting something like this, it does not have, you know, 32 bit float. It only has, you know, 24 bit. And on top of that, it does not have internal recording like their Comica Boom XD Pros that I did a review on. I will leave a link in the description that has internal recording, but it's still at, you know, 24 bit float. So I would just suggest, you know, possibly getting a recorder that can record, you know, 32 bit float audio or something like that or maybe looking elsewhere wherever for that type of uh, profession as far as you know getting those types of clients and corporations and stuff but that, those kind of people already know what they're looking for you know what i'm saying and when they see something like this they look at the user manual again link in the description uh to the user manual so you can read it up you can get the information you want uh and need or whatever for yourself for your use case scenario it'll be down there but for those kind of people they're probably already looking at uh more professional more expensive you know systems but this one i think is just for the average content creator you know what i'm saying even if it's just you by yourself like it is for me in the future i might do a video with my son i might do a video with you know my wife or friends even though i don't have any friends but you get the example like you can go out and vlog you can mic people up and stuff like that and get really good audio inside and out whereas the seven rhymes was only really good on the outside and it was good for like maybe some asmr having you know all the nature sounds and all that stuff in the background whereas this can do that if you want to but you can still eq it inside or wherever and get really good audio especially if you know a lot more about eqing wireless lavalier systems than i do you, you know you're going to get really good audio and i use ai stuff or wherever to eq the microphones as far as getting rid of the echo and the noise removal and trying to automatic level and stuff like that. I use a system or a suite of stuff from Crumble Pop. I think that's how you say it or wherever. And they have automatic AI stuff and I do subtle tweaking or whatever with it. It's very, I would say, newbitch friendly, but it's a paid program. So, I mean, but other than that, like, it's, it's going to do good for the average content creator if you are using tools like that in DaVinci Resolve, which is a free program as well. So, you know, you can take the time to learn how to, you know, do all this stuff as far as EQing, getting the microphone to sound really good. But in my personal opinion, just straight out the box, hearing the audio and doing a little bit of EQs. And again, most of it is just run through my Wavelink software or wherever, just default EQs that I use for other wireless lavalier systems for what I use their uh, Comica Adcaster C2 still over here with the regular microphones, the, the, like that dynamic microphone that I have hooked up right now is the Fine Fine Apple Tank Tank 3. And I use, like I said, the Comica Adcaster C2 Almost for every single video, even for the overhead shotgun microphone as XLR, I use the Comica Adcaster C2. I love this thing and I'm so glad they sent it out. I really wish it was still, they would have sent out the white version, but I have the black version. I've been using it ever since I did that review and it's been months and this thing has been a joy to use. And that's why when Comica reached out and was like, hey, you want to review this? And I was like, yeah, I've been waiting on to do review on this forever. And I'm glad they sent it out because like I said, this is end game in my personal opinion, as far as a budget content creator who's doing something like I'm doing, this is top tier. You know what I'm saying? This is to me, my DJI, you know, system or whatever that costs 300, almost $400. You know what I'm saying? Like this to me is it, you know what I'm saying? I don't think I really would need anything else because I don't think anybody else can do something as unique as this at the same price point or wherever. And what else are they going to bring to the table? You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, this already sounds so good. 
So again, thank you so much, Comico, for sending out. If you're interested in any other product reviews I have done in the past, maybe some other wireless lavalier systems, there will be a product review playlist popping up on your screen right about now. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, drop in a comment down below what you think, what you would use this for. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.